<laughs> I want to. Uh, listen, thanks for all of you. for You're getting an, an awful lot of good comments uh, for this series that we have on Mecca. And I'm really enjoying reading your comments at the bottom. It's been fascinating because as I've been going through these comments, I keep on seeing this recurrent theme by Muslims who are, you can tell, they, they are bothered by what's happening. They are trying their best to defend it. And one of the most common responses I get are, Mr. Smith, you have no idea what you're talking about because here is a map that shows you Mecca is there. And then they put a URL and you go to that URL and here it shows a modern day map from Britannia, uh, Britannica Encyclopedia or from another well-known uh, book or another research pe uh, piece of paper. Uh, research paper showing a map of Mecca. Sometimes it's current day Mecca. Sometimes it is attributed back to the seventh century where Muhammad lived. And see, that's the problem. What Muslims don't understand is all of your maps today that talk about the story back then will have Mecca on it. Why? Because that's the only narrative you're given. So of course they're going to have maps of Mecca back on it, if that's the attribution. They're attributing it back to what Muslims have told them, what the Islamic traditions have told them. And if that's the only place the Islamic traditions speak about, then of course Mecca is going to be on those maps. But see, those are modern day maps. Those are maps, maps uh, that were created in the 20th century and now in the 21st century in just the last few years. And of course they have Mecca on the map. because. Who's ever questioned it before? Until we questioned it, until Dr. Patricia Corona started questioning it. I remember hearing about this question way back in 1995, uh, studying under Dr. Gerald Haunting, and he questioned it. So it's only been the Orientalists and the Western scholars today who have really questioned whether Mecca should really be on those maps. And that's why I'm not interested in your modern day maps. Who cares about your modern day maps that are attributing it back then? Show me 6th and 7th century maps from that period that were made at that time, like I showed you. Those were maps that were actually created and that uh, are well known for the 7th and the 6th and even earlier. And Mecca is not on that. Now, this is not my research. I didn't do research on those maps. Please don't credit me for that. I know some of you are trying to say so. It's Dr. Patricia Corona who found this out way back in the 1980s. She noticed that all the oldest maps, all the archaic maps, remember, she goes back to those documents. She goes back to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Seventh. She reads them in the original script because she can read and write 15 languages. That's why she's so dangerous. And it was she that found, when she looked at all the maps, the, the archaic maps from that time period, Mecca just simply did not exist on any of them. Not on one. So that's one of the first ones. What are some other comments that are coming up? Well, I've taken some of them off. These are the best ones I've come up with, and these are the ones I like to respond to because they're actually, they are actually good questions. And here's one by Sydney. Sydney, you've done some before, and I've used yours before. I love the way you think. I love the way you try to articulate. So let me just read your question here, and this is what you said. Interesting, but there is an intermediate port called Jeddah, which is only about 50 miles to Mecca. A day or two on foot, in other words. Quicker by camel. Did Patricia Corona consider this? Tom Holland does constantly refer to her work in his book, In the Shadow of the Sword, which was published in 2012. And then, of course, Patricia Corona, who has 12 papers after Montgomery Watts, three papers. And the question is this. Were there any archaeological finds for Jeddah? Any Roman records on this city of Jeddah? And yes, there are. And well put, well spotted. Thank you for bringing that up, Sydney. Let me go through four different uh, responses to this. The first one is this. The history, if you look at the historical record, they tell us that Jeddah was a fishing village and that it had nothing to do with Mecca. The Jeddah, if you look at all the historical records for Jeddah, remember, Jeddah is older than Mecca. Jeddah, we do have historical documentation for. And there was no uh, interplay between Jeddah and Mecca prior to the 8th century that we're aware of. What we do know is that uh, the very old city, if you look at the excavations, they, the city of Jeddah suggests that it was founded as a fishing hamlet in around 522 BC by the Yemeni Guda, Guda'a, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, the Yemeni Guda'a tribe. Now I'll write it in, I'll put it in Arabic so you can see it right here at the bottom. 
the Qut'a tribe left central Yemen, which is way down in the south, to settle there after the destruction of the Marib Dam. When the dam was destroyed, they moved up then from Yemen and they came up to what is present day Jeddah. So, yeah, it has been a fishing village for millennia, for, well, 522 BC. It's been since that time. Other archaeological studies have shown that the area was possibly settled even earlier by people from the Stone Age as they come up in Thamudi. Remember Thamud? Thamud are the Nabataean scripts which were ex excavated in Wadi Briman, uh, that is just east of uh, what is today Jeddah, and also in this, uh, the Wadi Boeb. These are Wadis means these little valleys uh, where the, the water would come down as it came down to the sea. And these different Wadis, if you look at the archaeological evidence that's coming out of these two Wadis, the Briman in the east and uh, Wadi Boeb, which is the northwest of the city, you will find that they talk about, uh, these are Thamitic streets, uh, scripts that talk about the antecedents much earlier than what I mentioned earlier, the Kuda'a tribe. So therefore, Jeddah was an important port in the Nabataean frankincense trade, and that's why one of the things that Patricia Crone did find out about it is that frankincense was the only thing that was traded down that far down south. And what's fascinating is when they took the frankincense and myrrh, that was the only spice. If you look at her book on Meccan trades and the rise of Islam, it, written in 1987, she refers to the fact that the only spices that were grown in Arabia were down in the south in the Hadramat area, and that they would take these by boat all the way up north into what is now known as the Nabataean area. Well, they would stop off at Jeddah on the way because to get provisions and also possibly to stay overnight or if there was a swell, if there was a problem with storms and whatnot. So therefore, Jeddah was imported for that trade route, but it was maritime. It was not inland. It was not had nothing to do with Mecca. It had to do with the sea, and it was a very small port. It was not a, a significant one. Now, she goes on to say that the oldest mashrabiya that was found. Now, what's a mashrabiya? These are these balconies. You can see them on many of the cities, um, Arab cities and certainly Middle Eastern cities. These little balconies, they're on the second floor and they have beautiful lattice work here. I'll show a few pictures of some of these mashrabiyas. Look at them. They're gorgeous. These mashrabiyas, when they looked at some of them, they were able to find that the dates, these dates for these mashrabiyas that have been found in Jeddah, they are pre-Islamic. They are much older than the 7th century. They go back to the 6th and 5th century, proving that Jeddah is older uh, and that Jeddah does have a history, that we can look at that history that we cannot see in Mecca. And maybe the reason why Muslims will not let you go to, to Mecca and why the government of Saudi Arabia does not let you do any digging in that area. Okay, great questions, uh, Sydney. Terrific. Thanks for giving us that.